George M. Bailey, Lieutenant Commander, USN, retired. I did get another cruise of the USS Albany, which is, as you can imagine, a much bigger ship than a destroyer. Heavy cruiser. Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Uh, treated me very well. Normally, you have a gunnery officer, and under him you'll have a first lieutenant. And I reported to Albany. They made me a deck department head as first lieutenant. And a gunnery officer, he didn't like that. But he lived with it. And, uh, but it was just great ship, great people. You know, some of them get out of line on shore. But, uh, yeah, I remember one time a young sailor gave me a hard time. I was in civilian clothes, fleet landing. So I just told him I'd to take him back to the ship. And I didn't say do anything, I just take him back to the ship. Well, I come back and there's my second division. Beef, or first class boatswain mate supervising this guy as he cleaned. You had, on the stern you had a landing spot, you had, have white crosses. Cleaning all the white crosses with a toothbrush. And every now and then he'd kick me and he'd say, who's the first lieutenant? <laughs> uh, I'm not a believer in putting people in jail. I, if I can straighten them out, I do. In fact, I'm a senior member of the court martial board. I had to stop court martial just to advise the defense counsel what he should be doing. Yeah. Daily day, be up and around, walking a whole ship, and. Uh, sitting down with the exec when he wants to. He asked me to come in the cabin. He had a friend in there, buddy of his. He said, how are we going to take this missile off the ship, transfer it to the other ship? And he said, I'd, I'd like to do it this way. And I said, no, it's not going to work. I said, we'll do it this way. And he turned around and he said, see, I told you. <laughs> He knew I would stuck contradicted, but that was my job. I've done that. Uh, remember one time they get an anchorage, and I said we can't take it. What's the matter? I said if we swing on the anchor, we're going to put our screws right on those shoals. You know, you got to be aware of everything you're doing. And one of the biggest compliments I got on the Albany was. The captain declared I was the underway CDO, command duty officer, and I wasn't to stand watches, I was to come up, supervise watches, and I could sleep in his chair, but be there in case somebody needed something. Of course, the senior watch officer, who was senior to me, got very tight, and the captain called me in and told me in front of him, or told him in front of me that when you can handle this ship like Mr. Bailey, I'll take you off the watch go. And it was, he, we were going into New York in heavy fog, couldn't see anything. Radar had nothing on it. Now, of course, the ship to all stop. I said, there's something out there. Sure enough, there's a passenger liner out there. who made it into port without getting hit by a cruiser. <laughs> and, uh, just that kind of thing that he liked. I had to, I, I, I can't say it's a sixth sense, of, but it's a feeling. I've, it's happened time and time again when I do something and it turns out that I did the right thing. One of the things to be in my L division 
you had to climb to the top of that stack at Mac and write your name. And if it's still around, you can see George Bailey up there. Yeah. I had one, one man fall, all eight decks, didn't get hurt. I said, I'm going to give you the day off, go play the horses, do, do something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, uh, I, well, my stateroom was right under the tartar vessel on the starboard side. And uh, the reason it was there is there was an empty space and the exo said, touch your space, fix it up. And I did, but uh, it, the, I didn't have any heartburn with the gunnery officer, but you know it just irked him that I wasn't under him. And the other good thing about the cruiser, it sets so low in the water that your sonar was way down, and you can pick up stuff that you might miss if you were a destroyer. Uh, it's, uh, a lot of good things about a cruiser. Halos and Tartar missiles and the two five-inch guns. I couldn't could duplicate it. Yeah, the uh, so, a whoosh. Yeah, they, I don't know, have you ever seen the picture of the three tailors being shot at once? A little, 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 little be known that that was supposed to be four. They tried for four and got three. Yeah, we were general quarters when they went, you yeah. know. God, if you were down below and you heard that, <laughs> it was like the world just came to an end. Yeah. And the Russians didn't play any games with us. It's just too hard. <laughs> the uh, Albany was a good ship, had good people, and uh, of course, that's back in the mid again. And of course, we went to Amsterdam too. And the people couldn't get over it. I don't know if you've ever seen the Albany. It had uh, eight decks up to the bridge. And they couldn't get over how it didn't tilt over because they knew how deep their canals were. And we used to. I won't say I was on a drinking team, but they, they selected various people to go to these parties that they had. And if you could hold your liquor, you could go. <laughs> but uh, it was a very good ship. Again, one of the nicest things that happened is some lady came to my wife and told her, we each had to give a speech to the, and give a talk to the wives, and everybody say, I've got this kind of missile, and I have that kind of this, and, and all I said was, I've got 132 of the best sailors in the fleet, and they were, and the ladies really appreciated that. Their husbands were a lot better than a piece of equipment. Left the Albany, it was. Out of the blue, they assigned me as the Naval Liaison Officer in St. Thomas. 